ducks it play. Hype! Oh yeah, there's something I also need to to do, which can even be part of production day. So let's let me get a couple things open real quick. Man, I really wish Steam had a Switch Profiles button. I agree. I agree immensely, Athena. I understand that for a lot of people, it doesn't matter. Like, people that aren't like you and me that sh share both of our machines all the time. But, like, when Discord finally got that Switch Profiles button, I was so fucking happy to not have to like log you out of Discord and log into mine and get my authenticator code to where we could just essentially both be logged into Discord and just switch between the two accounts. That was so great. <laughs> I was like, oh God. Not that it was like a big deal or took a ton of time. It was just a minor annoyance, right? And one less minor annoyance is great. Alrighty then, 
Greetings and salutations, everybody. My name is Michael Schwann. Today is Sunday, March 5th, 2023, and Sunday means that it is production day. Now, we're going to be doing some reactions today. We're going to be doing a little bit extra today. I did already record the review that we would normally be doing today. Speaking of reviews, the re full review for Forspoken went live onto the YouTube channel this morning. You can access it by hitting exclamation point Forspoken. That was not recorded live on stream. So if you do, if you weren't, if, if you thought like, oh, I probably saw it last week. No, you didn't. It's, it's, it's completely off stream entirely. Uh, so the only place to actually see that is on YouTube. Uh, and I did that because of like scheduling and stuff like that. Also, after doing a few of those reviews on screen with uh, the ones that are on this screen, um, since I'm not interacting with chat during them, I'm like, mm, I should probably not have those on sc on on the stream. So... I have been recording them off stream before stream. Yeah. We record the review for Resident Evil 2 before stream today, but Forspoken went live this morning. <laughs> Warning, the review is just over 30 minutes long. I like to talk. <laughs> And there was a lot to say with Forspoken as well, because that's a very controversial game for multiple reasons. And there was a lot of things that I think needed to be really properly described and delved into with that game. Where, uh, let me see what the actual final recording time total was for Resident Evil 2. Let me go take a little peeksy peeks. Now, obviously, this will have a little bit of extra on the sides of it. Yeah, Resident Evil 2 is about 20 minutes. Damn, I talk a lot, dog. I talk a lot. I felt like I was even trying to be succinct with Resident Evil 2. Fuck. God. I was like, yeah, I think I got that one in like 15 minutes. Nope. 20, 23-ish, depending on how much is on the, the outer edges of that recording. Suck. Suck. The reason that I say suck, by the way, is because it means I have to edit it. <laughs> And that's not taking stuff out. That's just adding in all of the footage and stuff. I got to get 23 minutes of footage. <sighs> anyway, so yeah, for Forspoken Reviews up and available for you to watch if you'd like. Uh, one of the first things that we're actually going to do before we do the reactions today uh, is open motherfucking Stream Raiders. Because I definitely forgot to do that. And we'll also need to log out of Athena on Stream Raiders and log in to me on Stream Raiders. But one of the things that I want to do since it is production day and that is a perfect opportunity to do it is when we were streaming with Athena on Friday, I had been adding some songs to the streaming music playlist that's going on right now. Uh, we added some songs from God of War 2018, some songs from Dead by Daylight, songs from uh, Signalis, and songs from one other game. I can't remember what it is right offhand. And... I got them added to the playlist, but one of them played during the stream on Friday. This is Athena's. Don't start that. Uh, and um, it was really quiet. And I need to see if it is quiet for like on the file itself that's on my computer or if it's only quiet in Spotify. And if it is quiet on my computer and on Spotify, if... I can make it not quiet. I mean, I know a way that I could edit it really easily to make it not quiet, but I'm also curious if the software that I use to download it is what made it quiet. So we're gonna do a little bit of investigation to find out. And then we'll get into some reactions. I forgot to run that battle that Athena started. I'm gonna die. <laughs> it's just me in here, y'all. Do your best, pony boy. Do your best. He's killed four, five, six. I'm getting assists. How am I getting assists? It's just me. <laughs> I 
Man, my tank took out nine. Good job. Because you're a tank? But what What was I assisting? <laughs> Helping your damn self. Uh, I don't feel like it. If it scaled us down, it just scaled down their levels. But the number of enemies went up. Uh, okay, I need to... Okay, so it doesn't actually matter what I place. The only quest I have is this one, which is to place battle plans, which I can easily do. Uh, I think my gladiator's pretty low level. He's level 12. We'll go with Rem. Rem will just win, so... Like, one, one small tank out front from anybody... And Rem will just win. Just something to keep them from hitting her immediately. She'll just cleave through them after that. Okay, so let's... let's We can just stay on this screen. So let's take a little look and make sure that I'm not crazy, okay? So let's go like this. Let's go like this. And it is in the C drive streaming music. So here's all the local files, right? Uh, hold on for just a second. I don't remember what was playing, but this is sorted by the game. So, this is Dead by Daylight. It's definitely quiet. Yep, still quiet. Okay, so, this one isn't as quiet. It's still definitely quieter than, like, if I grab, like, this song from Crisis Core. Eh, not really. No, it sounds okay. This one is definitely quiet, though. Okay, so... Now, let me, I pulled, I opened all of the windows. Here it is. So I added songs. Oh, why would I do that? I added songs from God of War, Dead by Daylight, Signalis. Oh, and Stranger of Paradise was the other one. And I think Stranger of Paradise was this, was what was playing. And this is insanely quiet. Yeah, this is what was playing when me and Athena were streaming on Friday. And it's just, it's barely even there. Even in my in-ear monitors, it's barely even there. So here, here, we'll just use this one as a comparison. So this is Stranger Paradise Black Knight. Let me make sure it is equally quiet in... In the file. So it can be made louder, but the reason I don't want to make it louder is I have my Spotify turned down. I can turn it up, right? But it is turned down so that the music doesn't blast away my own ears. Because while turning up this song will make it better, if it's not gonna be louder for you because I have a, uh, a gate set, a limiter set on the music for stream. But if I open up, uh, sure, this one. Much louder. At least for me. Um, so this is probably sitting at about 25-30%. And if I bring this to that same level. Again, very, very quiet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up YouTube. And we're going to do a little experiment. Because I, I have an application on my computer that lets me download YouTube videos. Either as a video or as an MP3. And so the song that's playing right now is Stranger of Paradise, um, not that one, Black Knight, okay, Black Knight OST, is it Knight or, oh, it's K and I, okay, Black Knight OST, is this the one that I used? Probably. Yes, it definitely is. Okay. 
I didn't pay super close attention to the um, to the playlist I was using. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn this up to max, much louder. Okay, because I'm curious if the volume that I have the video set to in YouTube alters the volume of the song when it's downloaded. So that's what we're gonna find out now. So YouTube, 4K YouTube to MP3. Paste the link to the YouTube video. It's gonna download that, convert it to an MP3. And we'll open the folder and see what the volume is. Okay, that did nothing. Okay, so what we'll need to do instead then, because these songs are just quieter, I don't know if it's a YouTube thing, I don't know if it's because of the program, because all of the songs in the soundtrack for the stream, they were all downloaded the same way using this program. So it might just be that they're quiet, uh, because of the way that they were uploaded their recordings. And I think that might be what it is because if we play like the Entity Brain song from Dead by Daylight, not nearly as quiet. It hits the, the sound limiter that is placed on the audio track. So it, it sounds a little bit quieter to me, but it doesn't actually matter for the sake of the stream. I can still hear it. I can tell that the music is playing and I can see that it is hitting where I want it to hit for the stream. So what I'll need to do instead is I will go in. Well, here we'll do it with one of them just to, uh, just to to make sure that it works the way that I want it to. So first, let's go into. Let's get rid of that one that we downloaded. Uh, if I can figure out where it downloaded to, here we go. Get rid of that duplicate. We'll go into Adobe Audition and we will go to Stranger of Paradise Black Knight. Load it in there. And then let's go like this and we can actually just use the this and we want most of it to sit around negative three decibels. It's got a peak at the end, but it doesn't matter because the limiter will take care of it. And so if we just save that just as it is, it should overwrite the file that's already in there and well, we can close addition. And let me make sure that that's exactly what happened. So. Um, stupid Windows 11. Properties. Created the second. Modified today. Okay. So now if we play this. It's still a little quiet because I think the song is just a little quiet. But it is significantly louder than it was before. And then if we go in here... And if we go down to Stranger of Paradise, it is louder again. Okay. So now my question is, uh, if we go into Adobe Audition one more time, let's go ahead and grab Touch Me and I'll Break Your Face from Killer Instinct. And I want to see what it's... Stupid one is 11. What it's set at. It's peaked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it actually goes above zero decibels. It goes up to about one, which normally you don't go above zero. Most things operate at about, thank you, Athena. Uh, you want to stay around like negative three to negative six most of the time when you're like recording. Um, but I, I don't know a whole lot about it when it comes to music. So this is just really high levels. It could have been because of the upload on YouTube. Who knows, right? There's a lot of possibilities. Uh, so let's go ahead and close this. Let's put Stranger Paradise back in there. Uh, Black Knight from Stranger Paradise back in there. Let's grab the whole song and let's crank it up to where the average peak is around zero. Which will probably be about there. Save that again. Yes, I know MP3 is lossy. Thank you. Files in use by another application. Spotify, get the fuck out of here. Thank you. Save it again. Oh, God. Spotify, get out of here. Or, or, or wait, or is it this? It might be this. Let me try that. Save it now. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now let's play it in Spotify. 
Sorry, I can't play this right now. No. This content's not available. It's right there! <laughs> okay, so then that's that. Let's go back in and see if you can find this file yet. You cannot. That's cool. Here, just delete that out of the playlist. Uh, my library, local files, Stranger of Paradise. You are seeing that song twice, but you don't actually see either of them, so that's cool. Spotify, you're so smart. You're so, you're just so smart, Spotify. I'm so proud of you. Close it and reopen it, see if it sees it now. It does not. <laughs> Why are you like this? Spotify, reload yourself. Like, refresh the freaking refresh it. Here, uh, open with, choose another app. That's not what I want. Can I just drag this into Spotify? Play it, bitch. No, it can't. <laughs> Is it because I still have it open in here? Is that the problem? Why are you like this? I deleted it out of that playlist, but it should show up in my local files, which it does not, which is, you know, awesome. How do I file exit, like close Spotify down completely? And now let's reopen it and see if it rechecks. I don't know how often it rechecks your local folder. I was hoping that it would just do it. Because it should just see it in there, but for whatever reason now, it just doesn't see it at all, which is awesome. Good job, Spotify. I'm so proud of you. Okay. Well, at least I know what the problem relatively is. The songs are just quiet. I'll go in later and fix it. <sighs> Can I, uh... Settings... Local files, yeah. Re reload the local files. There you go. I I I hope that worked. Home. Uh, your library local files. It didn't do shit. All right, Spotify. You're just you're the smartest. You're just you you're the smartest ever. I'm so proud of you. All right, let's uh let's. I'm curious if the Signalis track is also quiet. decently so are these also quiet not too bad like definitely not the volume of like these though all right well that's enough fiddling with that sussed out those those issues sort of Stupid Spotify okay we got some game trailers to check out though y'all we got some game trailers to check out no peaky. That's the script for the Resident Evil 2 review. <laughs> Peekers. Okay, so the, the video games we're going to be checking out today. Uh, Little Witch, No Beta, Fatal Frame, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, Oni, Road to the Mighty, Road to Be the Mightiest Oni, Bleak Faith, Forsaken, and Mato Anomalies, and The Legend of Heroes Trails to Azure. Why do I feel like that was more than... Nope, that's six. I just can't count. All right. Uh, and we will start with... doesn't matter. It does not matter. How much time we have on the battle? 16 minutes? Okay. That's a, that helps us decide. We'll go ahead and just open up. Nope, not with that one. There's a reason we shouldn't open up with that one. Okay. Uh, so we should start with this one. Got it. Mm -hmm. I'm so, I got this. I got this, y'all. Had to plan even farther ahead. The reason that I didn't want to do Legend Heroes of Trails to Azure, this video is going to go live on Saturday. And on Sunday, the Resident Evil 2 Remake review will be going live, and I am dressed exactly like you see right now in that video. And I like to give the illusion that these weren't all recorded on the same day. So, instead, we need to record something that's not close to Sunday. Well, that's not so much an oops, just, uh... That's why we're not gonna do it. I'm looking for a title screen. See if there's any 
any other ones. Uh, and make sure they didn't upload a new trailer since I grabbed these videos. I don't see one. They haven't had a trailer. Oh, four days ago. For Ye East Memoir. Memoir. The Oath in Felgana Prologue Movie. All right. All righty then. All right, everybody. So now that said, put in your YouTube swans, your pog swans, your re swans, or what other ever other emote might fit your fancy. If you're a subscriber, you already have it. If you don't, if you have BTTV, you have that second one. They do have different inputs. You can put in any emote you want. It's just a way to kind of move the chat along a little bit uh, before we actually start the video. And it's a way to say hi to the new YouTube video. Let's get a drink. Coffee good. Coffee good. All right. That said. Oh, one real quick explanation of what we're actually doing. Uh, so Sundays are production days. One of the main things that we do on this day is we record a lot of raw footage that gets used on the YouTube channel. We've been uploading daily YouTube videos for somewhere around like eight or nine months now. A good portion of those are reaction videos. We check out the trailers for games that are coming out in the upcoming week, as long as there's enough of them. Otherwise, we fill in with other things that we want to check out. The way that these work is I will read an intro, we'll check out the trailer, we'll have a conversation about it, and then I will read an outro. And then afterwards, we make faces. Face gets used on the thumbnail, rinse and repeat. We do these live on stream because it makes for a more interactive and dynamic experience, both for myself as a content creator, as well as people that'll be watching it later on YouTube. It's nice to have more than one point of view and perspective, have a little back and forth to actually encourage that discussion that exists in terms of what we're taking a look at. Um, and it's just something fun for us to do together as a community, and it keeps me on task so that I actually accomplish getting any of this stuff done. So with all that said, let's go and get ready. Uh, uh. Here we go. All right. Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwann, and today we are checking out Oni, Road to Be, the Mightiest Oni. Uh, this is a cute adventure mythological style game, at least if we're just going to flat read the tags off of Steam. I don't know a whole lot else about it, but from the screenshots that I saw, I kind of got like... Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening style vibes, like the, the recent remake of Link's Awakening, but I'll let the game speak for itself. We have three trailers to check out. At the time of this recording, there wasn't a launch trailer available, even though this game does launch on March 8th. Uh, we have the teaser trailer, the second trailer, and the third trailer. The teaser trailer is back from September of 2021, and the third trailer is from November of 2022. So let's roll this back, get us in here with some audio, and let's go. I was born in the darkness, I grew up in the darkness, all alone with so much darkness. I can tell in the darkness, you will see what the darkness Oh my goodness. Is that a little boo? Do you have a little boo with you? Oh my god. <laughs> Fucking, you were not running fast enough. Oh my god. I'm gonna be big and strong one day. Oh my goodness. Okay. So that's just the teaser. Let's see where they've gotten in the time since then. So this is the second trailer that came out in August of 2022. So August would have been like Gamescom. Yeah, he's so angry. I mean, he is an Oni. They're not exactly known for being happy and friendly. We go into a hiding place. And we can smell and on my hand. Rest on my shoulder. So fast. Oh God, it's my older brother. Cool.
I'm gonna ride the little warhog. Lots of different camera angles. No, don't eat me. Cute. Also, can I say that both of these trailers, they both had really pleasant music in them. Like, they, both of these trailers, they were just, like, th the song in this first one was beautiful, and this one was pleasant. Uh, so, here's the third trailer. There's no audio. Hang on. Pause. I apologize. Let's try that again. They shouldn't underestimate him, but he's adorable as fuck. Who's that? Is that the merchant? Their animation's gotten smoother, which you expect, right? The game would get more polish and, and stuff like that as time goes on, but the animation work from a year and a half ago versus a few months ago, immensely different. Hello. Is that like a shrine maiden? Is that the samurai that's gonna come? Is, is that the final boss? The samurai that's trying to come slay the oni? Neat. Yeah, very, very Zelda vibes, but still its own vibes, like you said. Uh, and definitely closer to Breath of the Wild vibes. And I don't mean that in the sense of, like, the open world, obviously. It actually looks like you go to, like, that demon door and summon up your, your challenge. Because it was, like, day eight and you'd see the enemies, like, warp in. And so I think that it's, you're probably confined mostly to this island that you're on. And that each day there's a new Oni that you need to overcome within that space. And... I don't know if you're trying to protect the Shrine Maiden or, or who your little ghost friend is, but that's just kind of the initial, like, vibe that I got from it. But the combat is what felt more Legend of Zelda E in some parts because you definitely have some sort of ability to, like, fast attack enemies. Let me see if I can find it in here. Because there was a section in, I think it was in this second trailer, where, well, right here, he's zooming around. You have... You have the ability to knock these guys around. He's like zooming from enemy to enemy here. And then also later on, here it is. There's like a top-down view where he's doing that zoom around move again. But it is definitely very different from moments like that one or this one where you're just kind of running around, uh, you know, third-person action cam style. And this third-person action cam in terms of like the hearts in the corner and the way that you move around and the way that you attack feels very Breath of the Wild combat E. But there are some additional elements in there that make me curious about if there's like different genres that exist. So if we look at another game that had multiple genres in it, which is Near Automata from Made by Platinum Games published by Square Enix. While that game, for the most part, is a spectacle fighter, a character action fighter, it did have random moments where it's like a side-scrolling beat-em-up and another moment where it's a bullet hell. And they might do something similar here with that like top-down view. Uh, or it just could give you a different perspective depending on like giving you options on how to approach enemies and stuff like that. I don't know, but it, 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 obviously it gives curiosity for what it potentially could be. Welcome in, pretty. And so, I don't know. Super cute, though. Like it a lot. Really good vibe. Really good energy. I It's, it's super cute. If you think it looks cute as well, it's going to be available on, I know, at least Steam <laughs> on March 8th. But let me see real quick what else it's going to be available on. Does it just say in here? Mm, no, it doesn't. So let me just play, plug it in here and see where else it might be becoming available on. Just PC for now. Nope, it's showing right here on Nintendo Switch, which I think is a really good place for it to be. It's on sale on the Switch, but Nintendo's website is always the 
slowest website imaginable base price of $30 currently on sale on switch for $27 but it does properly release here in just a couple of days so that is Oni on the road to uh, Oni road to be the mightiest Oni uh, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, put them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to keep up the conversation elsewhere, two great places to do so are Discord and Twitter. Speaking of Discord, we have a channel dedicated to these reactions where you can place links of your own that we can check out together live on stream because we do stream on Twitch and I would love to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. If you want to catch future videos, please subscribe to the channel. If you go watch one of the other videos on the channel or if I see you in the live stream, thank you and enjoy. Cozy little demon game. You know, just, just a cozy little little demon game. Very cute, though. All right. Four minutes. You got four minutes, everybody. Get your units placed. Cooperate, camera. Cooperate. Stop. Cooperate and listen. Shmai, AP10, El Canadiano, Elaine, Pretty Hero Dude. But it's collaborate. I, yeah. C collaborate with me, camera. Let's collab. Let's make some content together. Camera's like, fuck you. No, I'm going to go off and make my own content. With blackjack and hookers. Oh, so you're streaming on kick. Jab. That escalated quickly. And Athena, I knew really well that the lyrics that I said were wrong. Did I know what the right ones were? No. No, I did not. Did I turn the music off? No. Just quiet. I wish I could tell. I wish Spotify or a program was smart enough that I could just be like, yo, I want all of the music that I play through here to be right around this volume level. Like, do you remember when TVs advertised that? There was that big advertising push that TVs had of that they would automatically lower the volume of commercials because there was that era where TVs, like, where, TV, where, where, where commercials were just insanely loud compared to television. You'd be cranking the volume up so you could hear what the fuck people were saying in like Law and Order or whatever. And then a commercial would turn on and everyone would scramble for a remote as quickly as possible to try and crank the volume down because the commercials were just four, five, seven, ten times louder than normal television. And then there was all those freaking uh, TVs that were advertising like, yeah, we automatically turn down the commercials for you using smart technology or whatever I need that but what I needed to do is I needed to tell Spotify to make all of my music the same volume <laughs> if it's too quiet make it louder if it's too loud make it quieter okay let's start this persona 4 was fucking badass by the way I'm really loving Persona 5. I'm loving it a lot, but I'll say still, Persona 4 was really damn good.
two vampires, one musketeer, either of which can be yours for 420 channel points. Most kills going to myself. Uh, and <laughs> followed by Athena. Most assists going to Athena with 34. Hot damn. Uh, followed by AP Ted with seven. Going random in five. Although, you know, so me and Athena, we've been playing through the Persona games here and there on Power Couple, right? We started with Persona 4. We're playing Persona 5 right now. Eventually, we will get around to doing Persona 3. But everyone believes that the announcement for Persona 6 is going to be right around the corner. A lot of people are expecting Persona 6 to be announced sometime in the next six months either at one of the summer events, so like Summer Games Fest, E3, etc., or at something like the Tokyo Game Show, which I think takes place in September this year, I think. Um, maybe it's August. Either way. And so they're, they're, they're expecting it to be at one of those that the proper announcement of Persona 6 will take place. Having not been a Persona fan... Before now, essentially, before approaching the release of a major Persona game, now leaves me with a quandary, which is, do, do you jump on Persona 6 early because you're excited about it and you know it's going to be awesome, right? Or do you wait the two to four years that it will be to get... Persona 6 whatever, right? Persona 3 Festival, Persona 4 Golden, Persona 5 Royal, whatever the director's cut version is of Persona 6, whatever it ends up being called. Um, you now have to make that decision, right? Because like myself personally, I normally only play through games once. I don't have a whole lot of time. There's a lot of games that I want to play. So a lot of games don't get replayed. And... If you play through base Persona 6, you, that, you, you're not going to play through the director's cut. Or then you do have to make that change to where you play the director's cut of it. And I just, I don't know. I don't know. That's a hard question. Place your units, everybody. I'd also need to look at the, um, I need to look at how much time normally was between those versions, right? I mean, we can just take a quick little peek now. Uh, Persona, because I'm curious now. So Persona 3, let's go to the Persona 3 Wikipedia, Persona 4 Wikipedia, and Persona 5 Wikipedia page. Persona 3... Okay, so it, it, it'll depend on some things, right? So Persona 3 released in Japan July 2006. And Persona 3 Festival, Persona 3 FES, released in 2007. So it was only a year later before they got the director's cut. Uh, and then Persona 3 Portable, which took it even farther because the Persona 3 is weird in that way. When did Persona 3 Portable come out? So Persona 3 Portable came out in 2009. So about three years later. Persona 4 released in 2008. Mm, I'm looking for the release of Persona 4 Golden if I can find it in here. Persona 4 Golden released in 2012, so that was four years, and I believe Persona 5 is the same way. Persona 5 released in 2016, and Persona 5 Royal released, it, it depends on where you are, I guess, because Persona 5 released in Japan in September of 2016, but worldwide in April of 2017, Persona 5 Royal released Japan October of 2019 or March of 2020 for worldwide. So there was a three year delay between Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal. So you're looking at somewhere between a two to a four year, two to a three year delay. 
between the base release and the director's cut of the game. Ma, that doesn't help me at all. That doesn't get me anywhere closer to an answer. Fuck, let's just go record another video instead. <laughs> All right. We'll just use this one. Whoop. All right. With that little detour involved. Uh, nope, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the, the YouTube swan there. YouTube swan. All right, everyone, put in your emotes, your YouTube swans, your pog swans, your re-swans, or whatever other emote fits your fancy, and we'll get started on this next one. Oh, my back. Ooh. All right. Here we go. Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwann, and today we are checking out Little Witch No Beta. Now, if you're like, I thought this released already, it did uh, on Steam. It released on Steam in September of 2022, and it was supposed to release on PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch at the same time. It did not. It is now actually being released on the console platforms that it was supposed to release on before. This game also had a pretty lengthy early access time. Uh, I never actually got around to playing it I wish I did because it was something that was really high on my interest list, but I just never managed to do that. Little Witch No Beta is a game where you play as a young anime mage, and it is a Soulsian game, and a very aggressive one. Like, I've talked to people that have played it, they're like, dude, it's brutal. It makes Dark Souls look like a joke. You get murdered a lot. But you're a cute little anime mage, so, you know, it's fine, I guess. Anyway, yeah, so that's what we're here. We're going to actually check out all the trailers that exist for it, including the uh, launch release announcement trailer for the upcoming console versions. I haven't actually seen most of these because it just kind of appeared on my Steam page at one point in time. Like, it just was like, you might like this. And I was like, yeah, you right. So we'll go back to the original trailer in June of 2020 and work our way forward from there. See where it's come from, where it's gotten to. Concept art. To reveal the mystery of her past, the little witch has come all this way, or whatever that said. I made up that last line because it disappeared very quickly. I believe the initial demo or release of, or initial early access version of this was literally only this boss fight against this big night guy. There wasn't anything else. Tanya. It's way too cute to be a Solzian. Makes you upsetty. Hey, we need cute Solzians too. Everything can't be melodramatic, high European, low fantasy, nights in depression. Yeah, that's like Code Vein, you know, we needed anime souls. Looks very Soulsian-y. 
Although, of course, you know, we got the, the cute little witch there and she's using magic spells instead of a sword. She just got her ass beat. I mean, she was still standing. What are the little ghostesses? Oh, hell no. Is that supposed to be a zone enemy? Oh, oh God. <laughs> Would you like to see my teddy bear? No. Damn. That hit stopped though. Neat enemy designs. Cool looking bosses. Yeah, I don't know how many actually made it into the final game. So this is from June 2022. This is the full version promotional animation. So this is probably just a cute video. They get a full, like, short three-minute animation done to promote the game. Yes. No. Ain't giving you shit. I'd watch this. Pretty, yes, it has, but it's releasing on consoles now. Who are you? We haven't seen you yet. Vanessa. Soul Doll of the Throne. Oh, we didn't get to see what she looked like as a boss, though? Unless she just doesn't have a different form, right? Cute. It was a really cute animation. Is there actually anything past this? Uh, Pre-order benefits cast. All right, moving, move, moving along. This is the gameplay overview trailer from November of 2022. Interestingly enough, this would be after it actually released on Steam in September. Why does what does that mean? Oh, okay. I'm going to re-wishlist it. It's $25 on Steam, so um, it goes on sale every now and again, but normally not a, a whole lot, but it's already at a pretty good price point. So cute. And if you like Soulsian games, I've heard that it, it's really good for scratching that itch. for cute tober reasonable ow and say they do a little more than threaten her safety did you just die to that <laughs> I was like did you just get one shot cuz ow kitty cat's like what the hell some girl just picked me up all right, and then we have the official Forgotten Souls trailer, which I have no idea what that means. But can you pet the cat? You can pick the cat up. Petting the cat is the ultimate boss. Got to catch it first. There you go. You can pet the cat. <laughs> Ooh, 
I like how some of her dodges are just lucky falls, essentially. Oh, hell no. We don't do rolling stone balls of death here. We do lightning corridors. Kitty. I'm good. We don't need to play with the mannequins. Oh, that, I think that killed her. I think that one hit downed her. That's a different boss. That's a horrifying room that I hate. Who made these dolls? Um I don't know if I, I don't know if we want to know, but I think that's part of the the story, right? There is something at the end here. Hang on. Wake up. You can't be knocked out. Get up. <laughs> Creepy people that hate life. Yeah, so like I said, this game's already available on Steam. Uh, it has 83% positive reviews out of 8,355 reviews. Steam does have a little mark on it, though, that says it has experienced one or more periods of off-topic review activity. Um, based on my preferences, the reviews within these periods have been excluded from this product's review score. Oh, thanks, Steam. I appreciate that. So, of the ones that I see, it's 83% positive of the 8,355 that are being counted, which is neat. Also, I am curious, Grab. we'll look at how long this game is real quick. Uh, did I forget to hit enter? How long to beat? There it goes. Uh, little Witch. That should be enough. No beta. Okay, so... There's actually not that many entries in here, but five and a half for the main story, main plus sides to nine hours, all styles is eight hours. This all styles number is normally closer to correct. So you're looking about an eight hour Soulsian experience for $25. It does have some DLC, which looks like it's cosmetics. So it's just a heads up on that if you were looking for it. I'm guessing... We saw four bosses because we saw the knight. We saw the, the ribbon doll with, like, the mask behind her. We saw the, um, the lancer knighted guy. And then I'm going to call the girl with the teddy bear one boss because I bet it has two phases. And the phases are phase one is her on the back of the teddy bear. Phase two is when she falls in the lava and becomes all big and smacks you around. Um, and I'm betting there's five bosses total in the game because I'm betting it's those four. And then I'm betting the fifth one is whoever that chick that we saw standing near the throne was. Vanessa, was that her name? Either way, I bet she's the she's the final boss. So you're probably looking at five bosses, maybe six if there's a hidden one. That's not too bad for... I, I feel like people judge Soulsians not necessarily by the length of time that they take to play through, but instead by the number of bosses that you're getting. And I understand that because Soulsian games are not always necessarily about the total journey. It's about the bosses and because the bosses function a lot like puzzles of trying to solve the puzzle of the bosses patterns and figuring out their opening so that you can get your attacks in. Because if you know the pattern, you can beat bosses fairly easily and the faster you can't you are at recognizing those patterns the easier it is to get past them and so $25 base price for a cute Soulsian game that has five bosses in it not too bad that sets it right around the same price and length and number of bosses that like mortal shell or the surge had so pretty good value in my opinion at that aspect so that's little witch no beta uh, if you've already played it i'd love to know what your thoughts are if you haven't played it yet like i said it is on steam and it's going to be available on playstation 4 slash 5 and switch so you have that opportunity to get there leave all your thoughts down in the comments below i'd love to hear from you if you want to keep up the conversation elsewhere two great places to do so are discord and twitter and speaking of discord we have a channel dedicated to these reactions where you can place links of your own that we can check out together live on stream because we do stream on twitch and i'd love to see you there if you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. If you want to catch future videos, please subscribe to the channel. If you do watch one of the other videos on the channel, or if I see you in the live stream, 
Thank you, and enjoy. Who needs the phoenix down when you have a void cat, right? Like, just get the cat to wake you up. Solid, you know? Don't even need to... Don't even need to fuss your pretty little head about it. Thank you for those claps, Prinny. I appreciate it. Um, I need to go change shirts, actually. So let me throw... Let me throw the battle up. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go change shirts. And I'll grab hats. I'll get the next set of videos open and then we'll run this battle just a little early. Doing another vid? Yeah, we got four more. I could actually get the hat on my head, huh? Might be helpful. A little bit anyway. How are you big enough, yet you also are trying to slide off of my hair? Because you got a big head, dog. Oh, yeah, you're right. We do got a big noggin. then let's get this next set of videos open we just did that one we can do this one next Get your placements in there. Looks like most everyone is in there. Look at this cute little puss in boots from Vorfinia. Oh my god. So cute. Look at this Ariel. Oh, it's from Ariel Tiana. What, what do you know? Vorfinia healer. Cute little crow. See Athena, this is a crow. Not your not your little chicken. Not a chicken. <laughs> He's not a chicken. <laughs> No, let me up there. I have to protect people. Oh, that poor fighter. That poor warrior boy. Defense. Defense. Horseman, how are you so slow? Good work, everybody. Come on. Show me that Templar. Yeah! Ah, that's all right. 200 gold. It could be yours for 420 channel points. Most kills going to El Canadiano, timed with Prenny Hero Dude. Most assists to AP10, followed by El Canadiano. Dim healers, though. <sighs> Flexing on you. Going random in five, four, three, 
two, one. Pretty with the gold. Back to the map. Oh, man. Getting close to that super boss. Super boss. Uh, I can't place another Centurion. Uh, there's no mind control baddies. These guys are ranged units. <laughs> I'm in danger. Um, let's just place a, let's just place a tank out there. Yeah. Elaine, I can't protect you if you're in front like that. Place your units, everybody. All righty then. Everyone, so close to my first 30. I really needed that gold. I'm glad to hear it. This Templar skin keeps eluding me. You too? Bummer. Did you get it? Did you get it, Athena? At least as a viewer? Oh, shit. Fatal frame. Yeah, yeah. If you need to place those dupe units, then that's okay. We got this. Oh, no, it's all right. I only need to place battle plans right now for my actual questy quest. Um... The units would just give me some, like, uncommon scrolls or something like that. Oh, I am done with this, though. That's nice. Uh, what is next? Place gladiators. I guess I'm placing gladiators now. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> After this, anyway. All right. Back into this. Here we go. Put in your YouTube swans, your pog swans, your re swans, or whatever other emote fits your fancy. Can be from my channel, your channel, or anyone else's. Just a way to say hi to the new YouTube video and clear the chat. All right. Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwan, and today we are checking out Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. And in the the continued and much appreciated tradition of video game developers and publishers bringing older games to the forefront of the current age. The Fatal Frame has been getting a new resurgence as they have been remastering some of the older games and bringing them to modern platforms. It was within the last couple of years that they remade slash remastered. I'm not exactly sure where it fits into that whole argument. Uh, Fatal Frame 3, and that's already out and available for you, but now they are also bringing us Fatal Frame 4, which is now being called Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. So we're going to check out the stuff for that, but I also went back and grabbed the original original trailers and marketing I only have two of them from the original Fatal Frame 4 these are ancient uh this is from July 21st of 2008 when the game was exclusive to the Wii but I do have all of the modern marketing as well at least the ones that I could find and the ones that I grabbed so we're first gonna go take a journey to 15 years ago. I'm sorry to say that 2008 was 15 years ago. And we'll check out the two trailers for the game when it was originally coming out. Uh, and then we will check out the trailers for today. So, here is the original trailer. Or one of them. I'm going to have to look over here because this 280p shit on my 1440p monitor doesn't work. That looks pretty good for Wii, but that also might be a cutscene. No, it actually looks pretty damn good for Wii. Can you imagine Fatal Frame in VR? Hmm. Like, imagine holding that camera in VR and taking the picture and looking at the camera while you wait for the, the photo to, like, develop to show you what's in there. Uh-uh. No. You get away from me.
<laughs> Athena, nope. <laughs> Absolutely not. Zero. Skihami no Kamen. Oh, that's not what I want to do. Hold on. Hold your horses. Okay, so this one has been subbed in English. Uh, this is another trailer for um, the original Fatal Frame 4. I'm again going to look over here. It's a easier to look at screen when it comes to these really low resolution videos. <laughs> Mildly unsettling. Worst part of the games were that you had to take pictures. That's how you fought the ghosts. Yeah, you know, it's fine. Yep. Mm. Suck. Suck. I hate that. I did not enjoy that being in my ears this way. That was awful. That was in my brain. Holy shit. Oh, that's scary as F. Great. All right. Shall we fast forward 15 years now? All right. So here's the initial announcement trailer. This was announced September 13th, 2022. Uh, here we go. Let's see what it looks like now. Yeah, right? No. No. <laughs> and fucking no. <laughs> oh no, 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 buddy. Oh no. Okay, moving on. Here's the overview trailer from October. They published this shit on Halloween. This went out on October 31st, 2022. This is the overview trailer. <laughs> hmm. So I'm gonna go too. Why would you go alone, man? Why would you go alone? Oh, 
記憶はこの奥にずっとずっと奥深く深く。深く so、who else would go in there? I don't know. Just, just ask a dude real nicely, okay? Guys are dumb. Cute girl, but like, will you go to Creepy Island with me? He'd be like, uh, yeah. Fuck all of that. Oh, hell no. Yeah, see, there's a dude there. It's fine. Don't touch me, ghost. This is on the list for Saturday. It'll win the vote. Mm. You know, one of the things is, I really like using in-ear monitors. I really do. It's on everything, by the way. I like using in-ear monitors. But when it comes to certain things, scary shit, or like mental stuff, like playing through Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, where the voices that Hell Senua is hearing, I'm hearing in my head. Not in my headphones, in my head. <laughs> anyway, here's the story trailer. <laughs> I feel like we kind of already know what the story trailer is, but relatively speaking, if you've been paying attention at this point. It's neat to see that cutscene remade since that was that little piano part there and a couple other of these little sections were in those older trailers, right? They're just upgraded now. No one wants surprise piggyback rides in a haunted house. The ghost does. <laughs> oh, fuck no. Capture spirits and defeat them with the camera obscura and the spirit touch. I'm okay. How about we just leave? Enhance attacks with various types of lenses and precise timing. Hold on, wait, wait. Why is there like a split right here? Like there's, this is definitely a split screen, right? You see the girl on the left and she's looking at this same type of thing. I wonder if this is just to show the puzzle. I can't imagine the game has split screen co-op of some sort, right? The close up of the puzzle, yeah, okay. New costumes, woo! Original costumes with high definition remastered graphics. What? No. Early purchase bonus: the Marie Rose outfit from the Dead or Alive series. New photo mode. Great. Probably because you aren't safe even doing the puzzles. Oh, that's fantastic. Why the Dead or Alive costume? Because Koei Tecmo. Because it's easy to do collabs with your own properties.
Spoilers? You tell me she remembers by the end of the game? Uh, anything else in here? A lot of other pre-order stuff. There's some footage at the end, though. Okay, it wasn't a whole lot. Koei Tecmo, level up your happiness. Level up. Anyway. All right. So that's Fatal Frame, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. Uh, it is currently available for pre-purchase on Steam at, for $50. It is probably that same relative price on all of the other platforms as well. I do know that Fatal Frame 1 and 2, I believe, have not been brought forward yet. Fatal Frame 3 and 4 are the ones that have been brought forward. And the developers came out and talked about that because they said that because... 3 and 4 were newer, it was easier to renovate them, essentially, to remaster them, to make them available on modern platforms. They would like to go back and bring Fatal Frame 1 and 2 onto modern platforms, but it's a lot more work because those games are so much older, right? And so... I understand that, and I don't know how much it matters for you to have played previous Fatal Frame games before you go off and play Fatal Frame 3 or 4, in terms of like like Final Fantasy, right? You can play the Final Fantasy games basically in almost any order, and it does not matter whatsoever. I don't know if Fatal Frame fits into that same aspect or not, but yeah. So, very cool, very creepy, super spooky. Have a ball if that sounds like something you're interested in. I don't believe I am because I don't like scary games. I don't play them. I can get through them just fine. It doesn't mean I enjoy getting through them. <sighs> anyway, let me know what your thoughts are. If you played the original, how are you feeling about it being remastered? If you are new to the Fatal Frame series or never got a chance to play this on the original Wii, uh, are you excited for it? Are you going to get ready to jump on it? Let me know. Put your thoughts down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to keep up the conversation elsewhere, uh, two great places to do so are Discord and Twitter. Speaking of Discord, we have a channel dedicated to these reactions where you can place links of your own that we can check out together live on stream. Because we do stream on Twitch, and I would love to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. If you want to catch future videos, please subscribe to the channel. If you do watch one of the other videos on the channel, or if I see you in the live stream, thank you and enjoy. Yeah, we're going to go with that where there's not even eyes on there. It's just that I don't want to look at it. I don't want to look at it. I play them, and I have a love-hate relationship with them. Yes, you do. You sure do. We got time for another one? Yeah, we do. All right. If, if we don't dilly-dally too much, we'll grab this one because there's less footage for it. Not peeking through your hands? No. No, I don't even want to peek. You like my eyes? Thank you, Athena. I appreciate that a lot. I need a title screen. Uh, Let me see if they added a new trailer since I grabbed these the other day. Scars above stuff. Nope. Okay. It's a release date trailer. There we go. There's a title card. Wait. There it is. Okay. Alrighty then, everybody. Put in your YouTube swans, your pog swans, your re swans, or whatever other emote fits your fancy. It can be from my channel, your channel, or anyone else's. It's just a way to say hi to the new YouTube video. Clear that chat as we prepare to get started. That's good timing on the music. I need to change hats.
All right, here we go. Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwann, and today we are checking out. I'm gonna guess at how this print is pronounced. I'm gonna guess it's. I, I don't. I actually don't think it's pronounced Mato. I'm gonna guess it's pronounced Mato, and Mato Anomalies. Uh, this is marked on Steam as a visual novel slash JRPG. Looking at some of the screenshots, it looks like it's probably along the lines of. This is very loose when I say this. Along the lines of Persona, where you got the visual novel aspects of like socializing, but I definitely spied what looks like some turn-based looking combat in it as well so i don't want it to just strictly be that visual novel moniker because those don't always have a form of combat in them i don't know a whole lot else about it but that's what we're here to find out we only have three trailers to check out the announcement trailer the release date trailer which was from three months ago in november and then a lover of time official video which i think is going to be a anime music video and then we also have the steam page itself this game does release on march 10th so it's out like like now, you know? So here we go, let's get started. 16. Is that a hologram or are you seeing shit? Cool. You know, I made the comment about Persona, but it's interesting that Persona 5 came out in 2016. So it's seven years old now, right? 2015 if you're in Japan, so it's almost eight years old now. And this visual style actually looks pretty close to Persona, but it's probably cheaper and easier to make almost a decade later than it was back then. Looks like an ad. You're probably right. It probably was. This is cool as shit looking, though. releasing on everything oh we know when it releases I just didn't know that it was available on everything there's a little bit more at the end here hang on oh okay <gasps> there wasn't a whole lot more let's not get too carried away now okay so here's the release date trailer. Hopefully there's a little bit more gameplay in it. We'll try and take a look at the steam page in depth a little bit too especially if that third video is just a music video the city faces endless problems, but we have the ability to solve them. So why not try? What's up, well, Doe? You know, a detective does have to be a good talker. How much of this game is voice acted? Curious. Everything. There's a card game? In oh, there's a, 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 a car card game so, for a particular aspect, so like the interrogation. This. What's this? Mind hacked? Is this like AI the Somnium files? The gun is useless. Back off, unless you wish to die. This is above your pay grade. There is no common sense. So instead of like a shadow realm like Persona, you're going into people's minds, I guess? Tenitrus? Oh, it's probably pronounced Tenitrus, but that's probably just because I'm a freaking English-speaking nerd. All right. Uh, so let's go to this last one here. And this is the Lover of Time official video. I'm betting this is a music video, but we'll see what's in it anyway. It's part of the marketing for it. Your gloves are cool. Her dress has the same cosmic effect on it. Oh, 
Well, ours don't move, Athena. <laughs> like, they're not animated. But I agree. Hers move, which is weird and magical. When AR clothes become a thing, yeah. Everyone walking around wearing essentially Google Glass. You can see through parts of her. Like when she was on the balcony at the city, you could see the lights through her. She's got to have some significance to the story, right? She was the big thing that we saw pop up as an ad, and she's been pieced in parts of the trailers, too. It is beautiful, Zena, I agree. Reminds me of you when characters had their own song sung by the VAs. Yeah, that was always super cool. I feel like some of this is cutscenes from the game. She's got to have some significance. Major character for sure. Yeah, that was very pretty though. All right, so yeah, if we take a look here in the Steam page, um, unfortunately Steam just doesn't make it very easy to make these images very big. Um, I, I can download the full-size version, which then makes them bigger, but it's just the problem of actually getting them open because it's not nearly as easy to click through them. So we see some environments that we can move around, different locales, like this is a... <laughs> this is... A bar. <laughs> Imagine that. Okay, and then we have, like, the dreamscape world of sorts. Where, and we see Graham here. What is, what was, what is this? Hang on. What is this right here? Is that a baddie? I see a, <laughs> you think it might be a save point, y'all? Just guessing. What the fuck is going on over here, though? Do you see this thing? This thing? What is that? That is a weird, horrible buckethead monster with no arms and a weird spine, and it's got like a weird long growth. Hard pass, anyway. But very cool environments. And then this was the interrogation stage that we saw, which looks like this is actually along the lines of maybe like a Slay the Spire. We see an energy bar here trying to attack different parts of their mind with different effects. But there was also this right here, uh, which is more of that like turn-based uh, zoom out turn-based RPG that we are looking at because you got you know, the pretty standard looking, you know, like dodgeball style lineup. We got one, two, three, four allies here against the big, horrible Omni boss looking thing. That looks awful. <laughs> I think I'm going to pass on that one. Not the game, this boss, you know, just, we'll just, we'll just leave it somewhere else. We don't, we don't need to play with that. All right, so that's Mato Anomalies, though. Looks really cool. It looks way cooler than, like, I was just like, oh, hey, this looks like it's coming out this week. Because, like I said, this does come out on the 10th. And it's going to be available on basically everything. So, that looks like something you're interested in. Maybe go pick it up. I wonder if we can see what the price of it is. Normally, on one of the console retailers markets, we can potentially see the price. We can. It's $40. At least on Nintendo Switch, it is going to be $40. Which, that's a pretty reasonable price point. Um, especially if it's not going to be, like, the size of, you know, Persona. But I can definitely see a lot of inspiration from Persona in there. Very cool. Very cool. So, again, that's Mato Anomalies. Let me know what your thoughts are. Put them down in the comments below. If you want to keep up the conversation elsewhere, two great places to do so are Discord and Twitter. Speaking of Discord, we have a channel dedicated to these reactions where you can place links of your own that we can check out together live on stream because we do stream on Twitch, and I would love to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. If you want to catch future videos, please subscribe to the channel. If you watch one of the other videos on the channel, or if I see you in the live stream, thank you and enjoy.
I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. Good timing. I said thank you and enjoy, and then it was like, yo, hey, battle's ready, and I'm like, hey, good job, me. Good job, me. So what do we have left? We have Bleak Faith Forsaken and the Legend of Heroes Trails to Azure. So I will go change shirts while this battle runs. The face. And I'll be right back. Uh, I would not say new Legend of Heroes, Prenny, but I will give you a full breakdown of information because I do know quite a bit about this release. Um, and I'll, I'll explain as much as I can when we get to that video. We're going to do Bleak Faith first. 50 gold and 2 monks, either of which can be yours for 420 channel points. Most kills and assists going to Prenny Hero Dude. Shout out to those pulling up right behind though. AP10 and Shmai with second most kills. Athena Latina with second most assists. Going random on the scrolls and the gold in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Prinny with the gold, El Canadiano with the monks. This year and all the crazy good games, our wallets aren't safe. No, you, you're so, you're so right. You're so right. It is rough out here. Any Enchanter Boys? There is one Puppet Master down there, y'all, as just a heads up. Uh, I'm gonna place this, uh, oh no, I need to place Gladiators. I'm gonna place this Gladiator. And uh, this is going to be last, everybody. Which means we will start the stream on Tuesday with a super boss. Super boss. Super boss. Oh no. It's fine. All right, everybody, place your units. Let's get this next one set up and ready. And we'll get these next two reactions donezo. And then we'll go find someone to raid. I believe that brat is streaming right now. They were going live right the same time I was, so we might go visit them. Put in your YouTube, uh, your uh, your YouTube channels. Yeah, I mean, yeah, go for it. Put in your YouTube channel. It's fine. Um, put in your YouTube swans, your pog swans, your re-swans, or whatever other emote fits your fancy. I like the iced coffee. Ooh, my back just made gross noises. Mm. All right, here we go. Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwann, and today we are looking at Bleak Faith Forsaken. We checked this game out like a year ago. We watched one of the trailers and like a little bit of like a gameplay showcase for it. It's a Soulsian game that is wet. <laughs> I realize that's like not a great way to describe it, but the thing that I remember the most from watching that trailer like a year ago, outside of being like, yep, looks like a Soulsian, is the amount of 
I, 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 it was black, so I don't want to call it blood. The amount of ichor, the amount of fluids that was being just sloshed around as things got cut apart. I don't know if that's still the case, but we're going to find out. Uh, they just kind of like randomly dropped the release date. The release date is March 10th, so it's releasing you know now, and they revealed that on February 17th. Everyone was kind of wondering where this game was, and then they're like, oh yeah, it releases in three weeks. See you soon. And everyone's like, oh. Okay, all right, cool, let's go. Uh, I grabbed more of the marketing for the game since we do have our new reaction format. So we're gonna go all the way back to the initial reveal four years ago in February of 2019. And then we can see how much they've grown and how far they've gotten leading all the way up to February 17th of 2023. So let's go. I have so many thoughts with the descriptive words. Was it was one of them that's gross? Cause you'd be right. You got a lightsaber? See what I mean? Wet. That was a lot of fluid and a lot of squishy gooiness. What is the light that is on your model? I wonder if it's part of your rigging that we're seeing. Oh no, you're getting fucking shot, bro. <laughs> that bro over there is shooting the hell out of you. What did that do? Did he just leverage himself off of your shoulder? Did you get shot in the face? All right, Shadow of Colossus time. Go, go. Let me see with standard Solzian rules, you fight something like that. <laughs> Jesus. All right, moving on. So we're going to go from February of 2019 to July of 2019 when they launched their Kickstarter. This is the Kickstarter announcement trailer video. I have wrestled with death. It is the most unexciting contest you can imagine. It takes place in an ethereal grain. Lots of dithering. Nothing underfoot, nothing I understand around. dithering helps with performance, but man, does it look bad. Without clamor, without glory. But this is still really rough in the development time. Desire for victory. Longer time ago. Without they didn't have the Kickstarter yet. In a sickly, colorless atmosphere of skepticism. You find yourself without much belief in your own right. And That's still cool. less in that of your adversary. Yet I have found that when one is reduced to nothing, the opportunity for meaning arises. When one is broken, reforming oh. one's will is inevitable. And when one has run, out of hope, faith becomes strength. That was a really impressive Kickstarter video, right? I feel like it's always a good idea for when you are launching a Kickstarter, if you have the ability to have a larger amount of things to show off, it gives people a lot more pardon the pun, faith, uh, considering this is bleak faith, um, in your project, right? Because then they see that you already have some, like, talent, essentially, behind it. We're going to jump forward to a gameplay showcase in June of 2020, so about an additional year's worth of work at this point. You want good marketing. You do, especially because you're asking people to have faith in something that's not actually out yet. You're asking them to essentially fund your project and invest in it in a way that the only thing that they get out of it is the product itself. Like, Kickstarters very often are just the most aggressive pre-order campaigns imaginable. And you're not even guaranteed the quality of the product or that you'll even get the product. Well, that was cool. Got like a little time zone bubble thing. 
Some of these animations are a bit rough, but that's okay. This was still almost three years ago. Uh, there's somebody over there, buddy. Really aggressive hit stop. Uh, ow. Did that thing heal? I feel like one of those bars up top was lower before. There we go. Hit it one more time. Good job. Oh, camera did some weird leaning shit there. Go get him. Okay, that's cool. Your little time bubble also stopped the projectile. Pretty impressed with that programming wise. That motherfucker definitely just healed. Oh, it reflected the projectile. That's also very cool. Stop healing or reloading or whatever it is. Oh, that was awkward looking. That's okay. Man, I would be so pissed at this dude. Like, stop running away. How did you heal again? Stop it. I'm guessing that's healing and not reloading. Oh, well, he shot himself and died. It's fine. You like that take on crowdfunding, El Canadiano? I'm glad. Okay, so now we have the early gameplay reel moving forward a little bit farther in time from December up to, from June to December of 2020. It's more of a trailer rather than just a, a short fight showcase, mirror dimension stuff. That looks kind of like the dude that was shooting at us. That looks like Mad Max. Not that, the clouds in the desert. Every path eventually leads to a cold and perpetual solitude. All good, Prinny. Eventually, even that is exhausted. How much it, are those specific walls that you can climb on, or do we have free climbing? Thread of all matter, entropy. And though my body has felt the melancholy undulation of human misery, it is cold already. A form long eroded. As is time. Yet in oh, weird. We actually got some UI elements now. It's a different enemy again. Are we a robot? No? What are we? Oh, whoa. Crazy looking enemies up in here. Holy shit, you're joking. Really is some Shadow of the Colossus shit going on in here. How much of this do you fight? Looks like a big catfish. Big catfish, big jellyfish. This is a really ambitious project, depending on how much of this you fight. I think that's us, weird robot man. Moving forward. So this is the Steam promotional video. This is now June of 2021. So what is that, like a year and a half ago? I think this is the video that we saw like a year ago. Because I think I noticed this game because it got recommended to be on Steam. Because I played a lot of whole lot of Soulsians. Jesus, that's big.
really good animation work for these attacks. It's gotten faster. Of course, it's been almost a year since the trailer we just watched in this one. Horrible, creepy dragon skeleton thing. It's like a mechanical Draco Lich of death. You must be trying to get on that thing in some way with the way you're creeping around not wanting to get noticed by it. So we have some spells in the game now. It's like a Shadow Rain style effect. No, you, you're fighting that thing! That was cool as hell. Are you gonna jump off of that shit? You're fucking joking, dog. This game got finished? Good fucking work. Jeez. All right, moving forward. So we have the new teaser trailer that came out in October of 2022. So we're, what is that, like five months ago now? Three developers, one dream. Three people? Three people. Fuck. Okay. Holy shit. Wow, this looks really good now. Look how smooth that animation work is. Three people. Fuck. Fuck! I love living in gaming environments today. The fact that three people were like, we're just gonna make this, and then they went and made it. Alright. This is the release date trailer. From February 17th. That was weird. I worried that like the stream died or something. Yeah, like you said, Athena, again, crazy different environments. Desert, city, stone, like palaces and stuff. All wildly different looking. Holy fuck no! <laughs> so many even bosses in this. different enemies and bosses environments like i realize they've been working on it for four years at minimum probably closer to five or six if not more but at the same time 3d environment movement okay at the same time three people jesus environmental destruction like the reason i'm i'm like listing off these identifiers is these are all additional things that would have needed developed and, and implemented by three people. Monster climbing. I 
I feel like what happened was, is I feel like they were working and they're like, we don't know when we're releasing. We don't know when we're releasing. And then they did like a review of the project. Like, how are we doing on this? And then they went, guys, I think we're actually almost done. And everyone went, oh, well, shit, let's get a trailer together and we'll release this bitch. <laughs> it's not releasing into early access either. It is just releasing. It is just coming out on Steam, and did that say the GOG? Yeah, it's releasing on GOG as well um, on March 10th. Damn, I'm so freaking impressed. It looks good by any standards, let alone by developed by three people. The environments, the enemies, the, the sheer scale of what they're working with in terms of what they have opened up and allowed you to do. Because this is Dark Souls meets Shadow of the Colossus, and that is a wildly ambitious project, even for a major studio to take on, let alone for three people to take on. And as three people, it looks really good. Really good. What did, was Okay, one thing that we're going to check real quick, though. I want to see if we can find their Kickstarter, and I want to see how successful their Kickstarter was. So their Kickstarter was successful for <laughs> technically, I guess, it got funded for a whopping $32,000. $32,000. They are from, okay, the person who put up the Kickstarter, they're from Montenegro and they lived half their life in Cyprus. They've been an immigrant most of their life, and they currently live in the United States. Inter Wait. Hang on. I have a college degree in art from Davidson College and played professional basketball. This guy has to be one of the most interest. Like, you, you, want you know that meme about, like, the world's most interesting man? I'm from Montenegro, but lived half my life in Cyprus. I have a degree in art and played professional basketball. And now I'm making one of the most badass-looking freaking video games developed by three people that puts AAA projects to shame. Would you like to talk? Hot damn. You don't need to talk. You just stand there and be a badass. Holy crap. <laughs> He's also three years younger than me. Was the age on there? I didn't actually look. Oh, you just looked up the individual. I was like, I didn't see a, an, a date of birth on there. Did you just Google their name? Yes. Born July 23rd, 1995. Okay. Sorry for outing that. I don't think it matters. I literally just Googled it because it's part of your pro ballers profile. Jeez. Anyway, that looks amazing. I'll buy it and I'll play it and I'll likely enjoy it. I already like Soulsians. Shadow of the Colossus, of course, is one of the most critically acclaimed and beloved games of all time. People really like Soulsians and you just went, mm, now kiss. And you also made it look really good. The combat looks really satisfying. Incredible work. Incredible job. I haven't even played it yet, and I'm already just giving you tons of uh, attention for it. And I think it's well-deserved. Uh, so that's Bleak Faith Forsaken. Go buy it. If it looks like something that's interesting to you in the slightest, I, it looks like a really good idea. But even if the guy has two guys in Europe for three guys in 30k... 30k is nothing, right? Like, absolutely is not any money. But it was, that might have funded some of their development tools, you know? So, but hey, they got there. Like, they absolutely got there. Because it got funded when? Uh, It got funded, oh, I don't actually have the date of when it got funded. It was in 2019, considering the Kickstarter trailer was July 2019. They were hoping to deliver by the end of 2019, and it's actually now not coming out until March of 2023, so it took an extra four years. Uh, when is the first trailer on their YouTube channel put up? Let's go check. The first trailer was the first one we watched, which was February 2019, and they already had some work done at that point where they were showing off some different enemies and some aspects of the combat. So they'd already been doing some work at that point. So, yeah, I really hope that you get the attention that I think that you absolutely deserve because that looks incredible. So, 
That is Bleak Faith Forsaken, everybody. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you were part of the original Kickstarter, how are you feeling about it at this point in time? I know some people, even when a project looks really good, they just get tired of waiting on it. But, you know, they, they got funded in 2019. COVID hit in 2020. I can't even imagine that they were probably an in-person studio anyway. Um, who knows, right? I don't know. They know. If you if you see this video and feel like sharing some details of the development journey, I would love to hear from you. Hit me up. We can talk. Uh, but yeah, so let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Uh, if you want to keep up the conversation elsewhere, two great places to do so are Discord and Twitter. Speaking of Discord, we have a channel dedicated to these reactions where you can place links of your own that we can check out together live on stream because we do stream on Twitch and I would love to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. If you want to catch future videos, please subscribe to the channel. Do watch one of the other videos on the channel or if I see you in the live stream, thank you and enjoy. Just need one of those ridiculously bombastic uh, faces for the thumbnail. Thank you for the hydrate, Owl Mage. Do appreciate. Hydrating with coffee counts, right? I'll drink some actual water. <laughs> oh, man. That was cool as hell. That was super cool. All right, how much time do we have left on that battle? Do I need to run it and then do the last one? I think that is the case. Pause, pause. Uh, let me make sure that another trailer for this didn't come out in the last couple of days because I did plan this. Uh, I did get the script and everything ready for this a couple of days ago. No, there is not one. Okay. Well, I am in the battle. Good. Good. Let me find... There we go. That one will work. I've been uploading dry runs of Pokemon Scarlet slash Violet Terror raid battles and everything you've been talking about in terms of the meta for the algorithm. I tried to jokingly copy all of that only to forget to put a description on the video. Okay. Give some people a chance to place an extra unit if they'd like. So when you say dry runs, El Canadiano, I assume what you mean is is that like no commentary, it's just the gameplay. Like the raid battle starts, you go through the raid battle, raid battle ends. Like it's just a dry start, stop, no commentary, like raw upload basically, pretty much. How How is that performing out of curiosity? Are you trying to hit the daily upload type stuff? But it's funny to me that people have to say stuff like, I beat that guy with this strat. I'm, dude, freaking uh, YouTube commentary. It, like the comment section on YouTube is hilarious and wild to me. Oh, I didn't read your your sentences correctly. Everything you've been talking about in terms of the meta for the algorithm, I tried to jokingly copy all of that, only to forget to put a description on the video. I get it. Tone and pacing of those sentences, I did not read them correctly the first time. I was I was waiting for more, like like there was an additional sentence that I didn't get yet. I got you. I got you. Okay. Yeah, everyone has their own theory as to like what the what what the best way to get YouTube to pick up your video is. Um, like, I, I remember reading like 
If it's for a video game, include the name of the game in the title and at least three times in the description. And I'm like, like they like that. It needs to be in three separate spots in the same description. And then of course there's stuff like hashtags and SEO tags. And like, there's so many things that people think, but nobody actually knows, right? Nobody actually knows how the algorithm works. But the thing is, is that we think we have a slight idea now in it because TikTok operates almost without any of that, okay? You can actually upload, upload raw, no tags, no description footage onto TikTok. And because algorithms are now able to read and see and interpret content, they can find that and put that content with other content that's like it to feed people content that is like it. So if you like these types of videos, even if somebody uploads a video that has no descriptions or no tags, but it's that type of video, TikTok will feed it to you completely without it needing any types of descriptors or SEO uh, factors at all. And YouTube is starting to do similar things of that if they know that you like persona, right? Like we'll say that you watched a bunch of persona videos. You, if somebody uploads game footage with persona in it, it will be more readily fed to people that have already watched persona footage. Even if you are not calling it a persona video or it doesn't have persona in the tags or anything like that, because they're just starting to see content on a level that is different than just the words that are in the title and the description. Although on YouTube, that stuff still does help. Although it is not nearly as important as it used to be. YouTube even tells you that the tags on the video basically don't matter. They wanted to take away tags on YouTube videos and then everyone complained and they're like, our algorithm doesn't actually use it. Not really anyway. That's not what we use to factor the algorithm for recommendations anymore, but they left it in to make people feel better. <laughs> <laughs> they left YouTube tags in so that people would feel better. And I still put in the YouTube tags because I I generate essentially tags anyway that go at the very bottom of my YouTube descriptions uh, for the sake of search engine optimization because things like Google and Bing and stuff, they still see YouTube descriptions. So if you put that stuff in the YouTube description, it'll still come up sometimes on search engines. And so I still put those tags in the description and as the YouTube tags, but they don't actually help you get found by the YouTube algorithm in terms of like, oh man, my video got recommended on one of Moist Critical's videos. And then I got 300,000 views. It, the, the tags don't help with that whatsoever at all. So that's why I keep getting reviews of restaurants in Vegas. I know who you're talking about. That person is delightful. <laughs> Oh man, Athena Latina with most kills and most assists. Ugh. One Paladin, one Buster, two Saints, any of which can be yours for 420 channel points. You went two weeks ago? Nice. GG. Oh, I need to change hats. I got Pikachu on my shirt. And on my head. Uh. Athena with the Paladin, El Canadiano with the Buster, and Prinny with the two Saints. We will do the Super Boss on Tuesday. Tuesday? Maybe I'll save it for Wednesday during the giveaway stream. Either way, all right, let's do this last video, everybody. Oh, help if I had the... Like, maybe I won't run Stream Raiders on Tuesday and just finish Wanted Dead. And then if we finish Wanted Dead before stream is supposed to end on Tuesday, we're going to play some Nitro Racing. Um, so maybe I just won't run Stream Raiders on Tuesday. And we'll open up the giveaway stream on Wednesday with Nitro, Steam Key giveaways, as well as the Super Boss. Yeah, I'm probably going to commit to doing that. All right. Anyway, here we go. Last one, everybody. Put in your YouTube swans, your pog swans, your re-swans, or whatever other emotes fit your fancy. E. Oh, all right. 
Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwann, and today we are checking out the Legend of Heroes Trails to Azure. Now, we checked out Trails to Azure a while back, and I had done a bunch of research into this game because I was like, wait a minute, what is this exactly? Why are people talking about this in a way that is outside of like, oh yeah, a new game and stuff like that? And so, to give you a quick recap of why this release is important, okay? So, Legend of Heroes Trails to Azure, this is not a new Legend of Heroes game, okay? This game is actually quite old, but it was only available in Japan. Uh, it's being developed by Nihon Falcon, as well as published by NIS America. It only had a Japanese language available in it. And, but Trails, the uh, Legend of Heroes, the Trails series, the Legend of Heroes series, is a very beloved JRPG franchise. And thanks to modern technology, there was a pretty healthy community around emulating the game, and then a group of people called the Geofront went in and did a full translation of the game. Like, they translated all of it into English and built an entire emulated version of it, basically a really, really aggressive mod to make the English translated version of the game. And everyone was like, sick, we can play it now. But capitalism got in the way, and rights holders got in the way, but it worked out all right in the end, because what happened was, I don't know if it was NIS America or Nihon Falcon or whatever, they approached the Geofront and was like, yo, hey, so we don't want to just send you guys a cease and desist, um, because we realize that through your project, you've put in a lot of work you wanted to bring this game to English. We never localized this game. We never brought it to Western audiences, but the lawyers say that we have to send you a cease and desist. However, what if we worked with you guys and released an official English version and created a partnership between the Geofront and NIS America and Nihon Falcon for us to use all the work you did. I don't, we don't know if there was payment involved or anything like that, but what we do know is that the developers slash publishers approached this mod team, the Geofront, and said, hey, we can't let you do that, but what we would like to do is we would like to appreciate your work by, by using it, and we will officially release the game using your localization and that is what this is. That is why we are getting an English version of Trails to Azure. It's not necessarily because we're getting all these other ports of games that never got released in the West. It is because there was a very dedicated group of people that put in all the work. And then I, I really, really hope you guys got paid. And I realize that legally you probably can't say, but I will just say I hope you got paid. They didn't have to pay you, but I hope that they did. So that's what this is. Uh, we're just going to check out a couple of things that we didn't check out in the last one. We have the story trailer, and then we have the official opening. Uh, so we're going to check those out, and then we'll look at the Steam page as well. So let's go ahead and get started. They look like little clay sculptures. Especially their hair. Look at that Reinhardt looking motherfucker. It's
Is it? Oh, no, it's not only on PlayStation 4. That just says only on PlayStation 4 because we're on the PlayStation YouTube channel. It is also on Steam. Uh, in terms of gameplay, they didn't show any in there because that was a story trailer. Uh, the gameplay itself is, is your pretty standard affair in terms of a turn-based RPG. Uh, if you've played any of the Trails of Heroes games, it is very much in that same uh, genre, right? So just be aware that you may not have seen combat in there, but that's what you're what you're not seeing all right so this is the opening i assume they mean the opening for like the opening animation of the game like when you turn it on <gasps> oh excuse me new meaning to the phrase gunblade jesus that totally looked like the wolf from um what game am i thinking of there's another rpg that has a wolf that looks very very similar to that who are you you look cool I think that guy might be evil, just maybe. The dude that totally looked like the major from Helsing. I think the thing I'm most curious about is who is this girl with the green hair? She's on the cover and she was shown off a few times, but nothing ever really points to like who or what she is anyway regardless so as i already said that's legend of heroes of trails to Azure. there's actually not a whole lot shown off on the steam page just like five screenshots uh running around the environment one fight a pre-boss scene cut scene looking thing I appreciate that all of these say that these screenshots are taken from the Japanese version of the game. This one's apparently taken from the English version of the game. Um, I'm curious, though. Let's uh, let's see if we can find a price. I wonder if it's available for pre-order anywhere, like on Best Buy or some shit like that. Yeah, the original release was in 2011. Mm, okay, it's on the Epic Games Store. Uh, the Nintendo Switch copy is $50. So, that's probably about what we'll be seeing for the rest of them as well, where you are able to get them anyway. Uh, I will say, though, that if you're like, you know, that looks pretty good, but I might want to wait for it to be on sale. Legend of Heroes games, they basically don't go on sale. Ask me how I know. I know because they've been on my freaking Steam wish list forever, bro. Even when freaking Steam had like a JRPG fest where they just put a whole bunch of, of JRPGs on sale... The, the Legend of Heroes games were like, 25% mm, off. And everyone was like, damn it. Your games are $50 forever, bro. And they're like, yeah, I know. Buy it if you want to play it. And I was like, I might not. <laughs> anyway, so that's Legend of Heroes Trails to Azure. It's really cool, the story that led us to get to this point. Uh, I will say again, though, I mean, it will be less cool if they just, like, took all the work and didn't actually give any type of compensation or genuine recognition to the people that put in the work for this localization. Uh, but I don't have the details on that. Uh, I do know that we are supposed to get a lot of the other Trails 
uh, games that we didn't get in the West that didn't receive localizations, that those are in the pipeline as well, and we are supposed to be seeing them here in the next couple of years, which is cool because I really like to see games be made available on modern platforms. Uh, while it is not the only part that exists in terms of video game preservation, because that also involves like preserving the ability to play the original copies of the game and stuff, just making them accessible is really important because there's so many games that are are not necessarily lost to time, but that are lost to translation. Uh, because like with a lot of games didn't get localized into Western languages or games are still locked onto older systems. And with the ability for newer systems to translate games into newer systems, the immortality of games on Steam or on PC in general, these are good things to have because they just make all games across history more accessible to anyone that might want to enjoy them. And that's wonderful to have because for the most part, there's a few games or themes in games that have aged poorly, but a lot of it still carries forward to today. And that's really important that we have that, that ability to access them. So, but I digress. That is the Legend of Heroes Trails to Azure. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you have more information on the dealings, if you know a little bit more than what I did about like what happened in terms of the localization from the geo front and getting to this point, let me know. I'd love to hear a breakdown of that. But anything at all that you want to share with us, put them down in the comments below. If you want to keep up the conversation elsewhere, two great places to do so are Discord and Twitter. Speaking of Discord, we have a channel dedicated to these reactions where you can place things of your own that we can check out together live on stream because we stream on Twitch and I'd love to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. If you want to catch future videos, please subscribe to the channel. Do watch one of the other videos on the channel or if I see you in the live stream, thank you and enjoy. Chat didn't go away. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. All right. With that said, everybody, that means that it has come to a close. The end of the stream has arrived. Uh, let me go take a look and see who is streaming. Like I said, I think that brat is streaming. That brat is streaming. Thank you for putting in the socials, Athena. Go follow me on Twitter. Come join the Discord. Uh, I like to talk, and I'd love to talk some more if you want to talk with me. If you can't tell, I am a talker. I am a talker. So let's go talk to minimal gameplay, everybody. Athena just put in that raid command. If you're not a subscriber, you can unlock that raid emote for 100 channel points, and it'll be available to you for the next 24 hours, including on other people's channels, so you can use it on the raid. So that is your chance to do so. We're gonna go check out, what are you doing? Mystery solving with Nancy Drew. Ugh, these stupid add-ons. I, You know, it's cool. It's cool the games that have Twitch chat integration, but I will say that they are like, a, they are invasive on your screen, man. They just like pop up and shit. And I'm like, I want to see the streamer get out of here. Anyway, <laughs> I'd follow you, but I already do. <laughs> Thanks, El Canadiano. All right, so let's go raid minimal gameplay. Uh, wow, uh, I'm so good at typing. All right, there we go. All right, everybody, I will see you on Tuesday as we'll probably be finishing out Wanted Dead. And then on Wednesday is the Steam giveaway stream. We'll be starting at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I think. Hmm, I need to see what my announcement was. Anyway, we'll be playing a bunch of Nitro Racing and giving away, I think, at least 16 games on Steam, such as Celeste and Street Fighter V. So I will see you there as well. Let's roll the credits and let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs>